Hey, so I got some requests from YouTube that I've been uploading a lot of uh, like lighting and artistic stuff and some people wanted some new playmaker tutorials so I thought okay what's the easiest one I can make and I figured the camera one is useful and another request what was got was how can I make a camera uh, gameplay wise camera the minimum one with as little variable as possible and a little playmaker as possible so that's what I did originally I already recorded this but the microphone was off so I guess I'll start over again but I'll be uh, not as thorough because I already recorded it so here we go basically I click play and <laughs> show the both versions I guess basically when you go in gives the sound write the color leave it continues so it gives the player feedback that's the point of this video as well not just to have a camera moving but have the camera show the player that hey it's the camera that's the range you can run around on the within but if you get too close to the grid it's gonna go red and you're gonna be detected obviously not gonna show a whole concept of games like connected to a system and guards coming and so on that would be complicated so I'm just showing you pieces and you can make the puzzle pieces into a complete picture so a quick explanation uh, I guess I'll you know I'll just show everything again that's fine shouldn't take more than 15 minutes I'll delete this again I'll delete this again, I'll delete this again, I'll keep this one. So basically I have a box and I have an empty game object that's pivoted around here and the camera has a pivot there and that's because when I do the animation if I rotate it's gonna rotate like this but if I rotate the pivot it's gonna rotate the way I want it to rotate. So that's the first thing I did. I didn't actually code the rotation like some of the people would have done as the point is to use as little coding scripting as possible and handle the uh, whatever else Unity can do to make things easy for you without Playmaker. So enough said. I'm clicking the camera pivot one, clicking create, going back to assets, animation, camera movement two. Adding property, transform, rotation, and on 15, I'm rotating left, and on 30, I'm rotating back, and on 45, I'm rotating right, and it's already in the middle on one. So clicking play, this goes back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. But it's a bit fast, so on the samples, I might go for say 2, which is smaller than the one I already had on the left, but let's click play. And you see it's moving pretty well. Now to speed on the process, I'll copy paste what I have here or duplicate. I'll move it under the camera. I'm going to reset those so they end up there. But it's different. So you might be like, oh, how do you fix that? Well, not the problem. Click on the spotlight. Click on the toot wheel. Click on copy component. Go back to the spotlight you have. Click on paste component value. Done. The same with the trigger detection copy the components go back to the trigger you have which is like over there and invisible let's paste it's done that's the workflow I work on when I want to speed up some of the things so it's more or less the same okay so we want to detect the player when it's in the detection I already have a playmaker code so let's delete it from the copied trigger detection and let's start over so I want to first have detection on the player so the FSM is going to be called camera detection the state is going to go for look for a player and I'm going to go for a trigger event we're going for the most easiest one Trigger enter the player tag, which means that the player you have must have the tag player here. And then what we want to do is we want to have an event. We are going to call the event player detected. And just click this one and it should add it on itself. Control drag left click is to create a new state. In this new state we want to make sure that the camera stops. 
and since we're controlling everything from the camera pivot we're going to click the camera pivot we're going to click on the lock which locks it which means if i click on anything else the setting for the camera pivot is still there and the reason is because we're going to go for the trigger detection if we didn't lock the ca lock the camera we will see the trigger detection setting and we will not be able to do what we want to do so lock it go back to trigger detection drag the animator in here to the playmaker set the property set the, the enable don't hook anything set value unhooked means that it's gonna stop uh, we're gonna go for a rename we're gonna go player detected or we can also call it stop animation if you want to uh, if that makes more sense because that's kind of what we're doing there we're gonna go there that one makes sound and this one stopped goes out it doesn't continue why doesn't it continue because once we've told it to stop that's what happened there's no been no information about going back and turning it back on so we're gonna copy paste it back we're gonna hook it on saying that uh, when we go back to this state and how do we go back to this state we have a new trigger event but if we go to trigger exit we still look for the player tag we look for a new event saying player left which is what we are calling it when the player leaves the trigger that's basically what is happening so when we leave the trigger inside it's stopping outside it's continuing that's because here we're checking for the trigger and when the player is inside the trigger it's gonna just stand still when the player leaves the trigger the green box it goes back here and it's saying okay camera pivot you can start moving again because you can turn on the animator which is here so how do we get the color well since we have a light we're gonna go for light color because we need some player feedback so the player knows the white color of the cookie which is done by the spotlight we have a light source and we have a cookie so you can technically just change this to anything you wanted to and then have a trigger box that, that matches the size so that's what we have done there so set light color we don't want to use owner because that would mean the trigger detection which is the empty trigger box we want to drag the spotlight into here and we want to change it to red and as I said before if you change it to red what's gonna happen is we go detect it it's red but just like the animation which we have fixed it's moving but it's still red so it's confusing the player in terms of player feedback so we want to go set light color and we want to have it go back to white so that's most of the important things when doing visual scripting and coding you can't have to tell the things the code and everything that once it's on, remember to take it off, off and on, red, blue, it, it doesn't know if you want it back to the original state basically. And you kind of want to have a sound as a player feedback as well, so we're going to go for play sound. And you know, let's pick uh, alarm somewhere in slow loop. So every time I enter it, in case I'm not paying attention. It gives a sound and then you go oh whoa so in case you're not looking down you can at least hear so that's kind of important as well besides the visual feedback so there you go that's how you can make a very simple straightforward camera using the animation and stopping the animation uh, using uh, just unhooking it in the inspector and you use a light and cookie and sound to give the visual feedback. Hope it was helpful. In the future I might do some more complicated cameras. Bye bye.